Hi, I'm Thomas of Meaningful Gigs, and welcome back to Heroes of the Creative Revolution. In this episode, I speak with Lou Rosenfeld of Rosenfeld Media about artificial intelligence and information architecture in design. Lou shares his thoughts on the adoption of AI, AI's intersection with information architecture, the big plans in store in 2024 for Rosenfeld Media, and much more. Let's dive in. Hi, Lou. Thanks for coming on the show today. It's really great to have you on as a guest. Um, really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today. Let's just start simple and would love to get uh, you know, more information about your background. Oh, thanks, Thomas. Uh, I am in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I um, started off as a librarian. I became an information architect. Uh, I had an agency, then I was solo for a number of years as a consultant. I moved into user experience design, uh, publishing in that space, and ultimately producing conferences in that space. Uh, the last two things, the books and the conferences, as publisher at Rosenfeld Media. Let's just dive right in and start talking about AI, right? So I'm curious, from your perspective, what surprised you about the adoption or the speed of adoption of AI so far in design? Well, you, you just took it away from me. It's the speed, right? Uh, like, it's unbelievable. I, I've been looking at things like neural nets since grad school in the 80s. And, um, you know, the, the, the general attitude that we always had, especially people who come from information sciences like myself, was that, you know, just don't hold your breath. And suddenly it's not only hit, but hit in an especially impressive and powerful way. And um, to the point where I was sitting with my college age daughter over the weekend when she was home from college, she wants to get into education. Great. Right. We talked about um, AI and she was like, I don't know if it really matters much for me given the line of work I want to go in. And I just grabbed her and I said, you absolutely need to think about it. I don't know what that means yet, but I can't think that it won't impact you as a teacher or any job at anyone in college these days is going into. Uh, so um, I'm just blown away. Uh, and my attitude is very different than it was even a year ago about the, the viability and value of the AI that we're seeing today. You know, there has been some kind of, I guess, not trepidation, but there has been a bit of caution when adopting AI within design. I guess from your perspective, what do you think has kind of led to that more cautious approach? Well, I think there needs to be more. In fact, I don't think there's nearly enough. Uh, you, you know, I, I don't know how much we need to fear the singularity and the, the world blowing up. I think we have the capacity to, to do that already without the help of AI and, you know, let's all pray for that. But um, I, I am concerned about disruptions, the unintended consequences of plowing forward without really thinking through what's going to happen. Uh, I am really concerned about um, the biases that we're only going to not only introduce, but make much more powerful. I mean, AI it suffers from the same bias problems that any algorithms suffer from. It's the, they reflect the attitudes of their creators, their programmers, uh, and the situations they were designed for. And so I'm worried about this especially powerful algorithm, for example, not being designed by white guys. That scares the crap out of me because it's much more powerful than a lot of past algorithms have been. So you're, you're accentuating things like that. Um, I'm much more concerned about the impact on jobs and not that it can't in the long run be good, but there's no plan for the near term disruptions that's going to create in people's lives and in their livelihoods. Uh, there, there, you know, there were people making noises about things like you know, universal basic income in the face of the oncoming automation of everything. And now we're kind of potentially seeing that automation of everything. When was the last time you heard someone mention UBI? We live in a capitalist society. 
so we're not making we don't seem to be making the plans that we should for the the disruptions that we're going to be piling on top of the disruptions we're already dealing with. As you said, you coined yourself as a librarian, and I'm sure information architecture is a huge part of your career and your life and what, what you're interested in. How do you see artificial intelligence and information architecture intersecting and interacting with one another? You know, you have to have a framework to teach AI, to train AI, and often that framework is semantic. And in other ways, it's structural. In other words, you may want to employ things like uh, an ontology that describes information in ways that are more powerful than just free text does. So someone's saying this is about this and it's not about that. AI can benefit from that. AI can also benefit from someone saying the important way of structuring this information, it's important elements are these and not those. You know, we made this big mistake in a way when HTML was first launched. We we started using markup like bold instead of strong, and we're still trying to undo some of those mistakes 25, 30 years later. That's a structural mistake uh, that um, I think we're going to be making many times over similar mistakes with AI. And so information architects are people who are trained, who live to understand, figure out, and get at good structure and good semantics. And AI will clearly be benefiting from good structure and good semantics. How have you seen the design ops community's focus on information architecture evolve over time? Oh, I've, design ops people, um, among all designers, I think get the value of IA. Um, partly because of the uh, huge IA issues that they discover through the creation of design systems. Like I think of um, uh, Nathan Curtis, for example, as a, a true information architect, uh, if there ever was, because of his work in design systems. Another person besides Nathan is Brad Frost with this whole uh, atomic design approach. These are people that are really getting at breaking down large complex spaces into units of information that make sense and that are reusable. And that's what a lot of information architecture is about. Um, there's a lot of people in the operations side that have been focused on research ops, whether you want to argue that's separate from design ops or a part of design ops, it's up to you. But research operations is very focused again, on storing evidence and insights in structures that are semantically logical, that make it easy to retrieve and synthesize into greater insights. So design ops and research ops people are very focused on reuse and effectiveness uh, in their operations. And so IA is a huge, huge component of both of those practices. You kind of mentioned some names there, but I'm curious, like who in particular, if other than those two, you admire and draw inspiration from within the design and design ops field? Yeah, well, I'm gonna uh, certainly admire um, Dan Mall because uh, we're putting out his book on uh, design that scales uh, on creating sustainable design systems, and you know, information architecture. Uh, is, is not just about the snapshot of how the thing should be at a particular moment. It's also about the change of a system over time. And Dan is certainly getting into um, change when he attacks the, the challenge of sustainability in design systems. Um, there's, uh, we have another author, uh, two other authors that are really digging into research operations and they're both well known, Kate Towsey, whose book is coming out next year in 2024, and Jake Burkhart, who's who might make 2024, if not 2025. We're really digging deeply into how we can make research reusable. And one of our past authors uh, is a real expert in that, Tomer Sharon, who's one of the pioneers in making research evidence and insights reusable. Um, there's a whole host of people who I really admire in the design ops space. Um, Brie Alexander, um, uh, 
John Fukuda, Farid Sabatov, uh, Pat Bertini, the authors of our forthcoming book on design operations, uh, Rachel Poseman and John Calhoun from Salesforce. There's just a lot of really smart people doing work in this space. And to me, they are in effect the true kind of future of design leadership and design management because so much of it is orienting toward operations at this point. What motivated you to start Rosenfeld Media in the first place? Uh, I was motivated to start Rosenfeld Media out of pure frustration uh, and a little bit of a flavored or sprinkled a little bit of entrepreneurialism. It's my second company. I'd had an information architecture consultancy for years called Argus Associates in the 90s into the 2000s. Uh, I was an independent consultant and I was getting frustrated uh, by being an independent consultant because it doesn't feel like you can change anything when you're a consultant for a large enterprise like kinds I was working with. And I, at the same time, I was feeling like UX is really important and nobody was really sort of stepping up to the plate when it came to publishing books for UX people. Um, so I started to look into that uh, and I wanted, and long story short, I decided I wanted to start a publishing house, partly because I wanted to, to, to actually start building out the canon of books on user experience design. And I wanted to make things, which a consultant doesn't get to do. So um, uh, I was frustrated. I didn't really like the way traditional publishing worked. I was frustrated with being an independent consultant and not really getting to solve problems and make things that were tangible. And so that's why I started Rosenfeld Media. What does 2024 have in store for Rosenfeld Media? Uh, this coming year, well, we'll have um, our four conferences a, a year. We'll be doing the Design Ops Summit in person uh, in, uh, I think it's in September. Uh, we'll be doing the Advancing Research Conference in person in March. And I say in person because, folks, we haven't done an in-person conference since 2019, and we're just itching to go back in person. As great a job as we've done with virtual, we miss people. So we'll have those two conferences. We'll also have the uh, very first conference on AI and UX that we produced coming up in June. That's uh, not really public yet, although I don't think anyone would be surprised that we're gonna be exploring that intersection. And it's not just gonna be very practical content on how UX designers and researchers can use AI, but it's also going to be very focused on the ethical implications of that work. In fact, I think what we're going to do is we're going to have a whole host of case studies with, at the end of each day, a uh, panel review of uh, ethics experts looking at the implications of the work our other speakers will be presenting. And we'll also have our third design and product conference toward the end of the year. We're also going to be publishing a lot of books. Uh, We've done eight, I believe, this year, and we're kicking off the new year with Jorge Arango's Duly Noted, uh, which is all about note-taking in this new era, like the fundamentals, but also how do, you, how do you create a knowledge garden using some of the current tools like Obsidian that are at the state of the art of gathering and, uh, information for personal use and connecting the information so that the sum is greater than the parts. We've also got Sarah Duty's book coming out, The Product of You, which is all about how to get hired in any of the creative areas by applying your creativity to presenting yourself, in effect, as a product from uh, portfolio to resume to interview all, and, and more. We've got Aaron uh, Weigel's book on conversion design coming out. Uh, we've got um, Heidi Trost's book on human-centered security. Uh, I'm just going from the top of my head. Uh, I'm, we'll have Kay Towsey's book on research operations, research that skills. Um, and I'm sure I'm forgetting some other ones. Well, we'll have our design ops book, uh, the design uh, conductor by Rachel Postman and, and John Calhoun, and then some more. So it's going to be a great year. Yeah, fantastic lineup, both on the books and conferences side. So looking forward to that.
that was honestly my last question. Is there anything else that you want to say or plug with the time? Uh, no, that's, that's plenty. And I really appreciate the opportunity, Thomas.